Do you want to start making cover songs and post them on YouTube but you don't really know how it all works and what you really need? Or maybe you even have a channel already and it's not growing the way you want it to and you need advice. Either way, this video is exactly the right thing for you. I'm a singer myself and I've managed to grow my YouTube channel to more than 6,000 subscribers now and I'll show you exactly what I did to get here. I will help you learn from my mistakes and I will tell you what you really need to be successful on YouTube in 2020. Let's get going. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah of Isla. If you're new here, it's really nice to meet you. I'm a singer, songwriter, and a little bit of a producer too. And usually I just sing in my videos, but today I chose to sit down and talk to you because I got so many questions recently about how do I make covers? What microphone would you recommend? So I'll tell you everything about it. And not just that, I actually chose to make a series out of this. A series on YouTube tips, how to grow a YouTube channel, and everything I've learned Learned. So make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and click the bell so you get the notification and I hope it helps. Fingers crossed. Without further ado, let's get into the freaking video. My first exercise for you right now is to scroll down and leave a comment. And in this comment, I want you to tell me how many subscribers you currently have and who your favorite artists are and who you want to cover. Maybe there's people with similar interests and maybe you can even collaborate. That would be amazing. I want to give you a platform, use it. What we're going to do now is that I will answer some frequently asked questions in just 60 seconds. And afterwards, I will go into more detail for each topic. P.S. In the description, there's timestamps if there's something that particularly interests you. Ready, set, go. <laughs> How does it work? Ready, set, 60 seconds, starting now. Do I need to buy a microphone to make YouTube covers? Not necessarily. If you have a phone, which you probably do, or a camera maybe, start recording yourself with that and then see how it sounds. Usually the quality is more than enough, especially if you're just starting out. Do I need a professional camera? Also no. Start with what you have. It's more important to get going than to have it perfect right away. If I don't play an instrument, can I still make covers? Yes you can. There's tons of instrumentals on YouTube that are free to use. Do I need any software to make covers? Sadly yes. <laughs> Especially if you buy a microphone. Because then you will need to edit your vocals. This type of software is called DAW. D-A-W, that's short for Digital Audio Workstation. And obviously you are gonna film a video so you need to edit it. So you're gonna need video editing software, but there's tons of free ones, so don't worry about that. I see a trend happening nowadays that old school YouTube kind of videos get trendy again. That when somebody sings in their bedroom and it's all natural without a mic, people love it. Some of my most watched videos were recorded without a mic and people weren't really bothered by it. In contrary, they actually loved it because they said, it's so cool to see that you can actually sing without any filters and still sound good. So if you can't afford a mic right now, totally cool. If you do want to upgrade and have a more professional audio quality right away, you gotta know two things about mics. There's number one, USB mics that will plug directly into your computer. Or number two, there's mics that, well, they don't. They don't plug into your computer. You need an interface in between microphone and computer. So that means more gear you need to buy. And interfaces aren't necessarily the cheapest. Oh, by the way, I haven't even mentioned the one I have. My interface I use for everything is a Focusrite Scarlett 6i6 and it was around 250 bucks. For most people, I would recommend buying a mic that you can plug directly into your computer. You're probably interested in what kind of mic do I have? Well, for my covers and my original songs as well, I use the 
Rode NT1A microphone. I bought it in a bundle and I think that entire bundle was about also $250. But what you gotta know, that one only works with an interface. Another one that a lot of people use is the Blue Yeti mic. And then I also saw Samantha Harvey use one. I don't know the name right now. I will show it to you here. That plugs directly into your computer as well. And she was super happy with it. So that might be an option for you, but just do your research and Google around what you can find, what fits your budget and your voice as well. For most mics, what you also need to consider is that it doesn't stop there. You need to buy a mic stand. You need to buy cables. Don't forget the cables, guys. What I would always advise you to buy is a pop filter or a pop shield. Some sounds are not translated very well into the microphone and actually need to be shielded from it. And these are the popping sounds, you know, the p, k, you know, where a lot of breath flows out of your mouth. And that will make a huge difference in your recording. So if you don't have one yet, buy one immediately. That's a really big one, guys. If you buy a mic, buy a pop filter. By the way, the products that I mentioned in this video, I try to put all the links down in the description so you can find them on Amazon. These are affiliate links, so if you actually buy them, I might earn a small commission, which is probably like just like two cents or something. <laughs> it's not a lot, but it would mean the world because you don't need to pay extra and you just help me out a little bit. That would be cool. So if you buy, please buy from here, come back to the video and click my link. <laughs> Next up, instrumental. How to find one, how to find out if you're allowed to use it and how to download it. If you don't play an instrument, you're probably like, how do I even find instrumentals, right? Just search on YouTube. Not right now though, not right now. There's tons of karaoke channels and with most ones you're able to see if you're allowed to use the instrumental in your video and if you have to give credit. Just search through the video description. If it's not there, go to the channels about section. It might be there. If it's nowhere to be found, just leave a comment asking for permission. People usually answer super fast. I will link some of my favorite karaoke channels down below that I usually go to for instrumentals. If you record with a mic, you will need to download a backing track because then you will import the backing track into your software and you will record the vocals in the software and then you will mash these two together so that they sound like they actually fit together. How do you download a backing track from YouTube? Either look in the video description, they often have download links available there, or you just Google YouTube to MP3 converter or YouTube to WAV, W-A-V converter. You copy the video link of the video you wanna use, paste it there, and then download it. It's as simple as that, and then you just import it into your music software. If you do not record with a microphone, you will not need to download any instrumental. Because how do you record yourself? You film and record vocals with, let's say, your phone. And then you need a second device, like a laptop, a computer, an iPad, where you play the instrumental. No need to download it. You will just play it live on the second device. At some point, you will probably need a music software to arrange vocals, to arrange vocal and instrumental, add effects to your voice, and there's so many different ones. But if you're a lucky Apple user, you already have one for free that's really good. And what is that? GarageBand. You can do almost everything on there. And if you really reach its limitations, then you can just upgrade to Logic Pro X. That's what I personally use but in the beginning, you really don't need it. And for cover songs, GarageBand is more than enough. If you're not one of the, the chosen Apple people, I have not been for the longest time. There's a software called Audacity. That's what I started with on my Windows computer. And then what I found recently on the internet, it's called BandLab. That was a DAW that's completely online and, and that's free. So maybe check that website out. Did you know that Conan Gray did his breakout song in GarageBand? So, it, so I know it's enough for you too. <laughs> I would strongly advise you 
not to use autotune for your covers. Why? You don't have a following yet and you don't want to paint this picture of yourself and then you can't live up to it in real life, you know? And for vocal effects, if you're using one of these DAWs, you will try vocal effects and they're not a bad thing and they're not the same as autotune. One of the first thing everybody needs to learn is that you need a compressor because what does a compressor do? Basically, it adjusts the volume that everything sounds like more squashed together and it's it doesn't have so many highs and lows that sound far apart. It's like more like everything is a, is a similar volume. Another one is reverb. Usually you record vocals in a smaller room that is well ideally soundproof or at least has like a big fed rug on the floor that takes away hall. Then you have all the freedom in the world to make your voice sound however you want it to. You can make it sound like you sang this song in a cave. You can make it sound like you sang it, I don't know, in a church, whatever. And that's what reverb does. It defines the room you're singing in. So that's just two of the main vocal effects that pretty much everybody uses. Let's talk cameras real quick. I don't really want to get into that too much. I just know that you don't need a DSLR. You really don't. If you're like a really big fan of this kind of stuff and you have the money, then go for it. But if you're like on a budget or something, use your phone, use the camera you already have. This is the camera that I'm filming with. It's a Panasonic. It films in 4K, so if you're really looking to buy a camera, I would say make sure that it can film in 4K. That's like a really high resolution and it might become the next standard, who knows. And if you don't want to buy anything new, the only thing that you really need to pay attention to is that you're filming in HD. We all know what it's like when our phone is not really loading the video correctly and it's kind of blurry. It's annoying because we're not used to it anymore. So make sure it's at least HD. That's the only thing I would really recommend. New YouTubers often overlook the topic of lighting, but it's actually really important because that can make all the difference of how professional your video looks. If you have a window in the room you want to film in, you won't need lights. Except if you only want to film at night, then you need lights. <laughs> But if you can use the natural lighting of outside, that's the best lighting you can get. I'm sitting in front of a window, always. It's right there and it's the light is coming directly at me and it makes the best light, especially if you're wearing glasses because every light that I put on my sides you will see in my glasses. And with a window, it's the least reflection. If you want to buy lights, some really cool ones are soft boxes. They're often not really expensive. Um, or just like a ring light for your phone. Use natural lighting if you can, and if not, just Google for a really cheap alternative. It doesn't have to be expensive. I mean, it's light after all. Just always remember, nobody wants to watch a video that's really dark where you can't really see anything. Don't forget the background, guys. I can't even tell you how many times I watched videos and they have like dirty laundry in the back. Just think about what you want to see. For me, my goal has always been that I want to have a channel where everything feels really warm. And that meant for me getting these lights right here. There's a candle. It's even with a scent, but I don't think you can smell it, can you? What scent do you think it is? Comment down below. <laughs> and then I got another light. So one, two, three, and a fake plant over there. And my fake stone wall. I really thought about which angle of my room do I want to show, and that's what you should do too. An added bonus is that you just have a nicer room. It's not that you only invest in your videos that they look better, but you also invest in real life, so that's win-win. 
I personally still use iMovie, which is free. I'm thinking about upgrading to Final Cut Pro, um, but still thinking about it. So I'm like actually pretty cool with iMovie. There's so many free apps for your phone where you can edit videos. I would just always make sure there's no watermark. I started out with the Windows Live Movie Maker. So if you're using Windows, that might be a good alternative for you. And that works just fine. Try it out. If it's not enough, switch. One final tip when you edit the video, look if there's any filters you can do. I want to show you something right now. This is what my video looks like without any filters and this is with. Now what looks better? I would say this. Filters can often make a huge difference and so I experiment with that. Really play around with everything the software has to offer. Have fun with it. That's the most important thing ever. Creating a title for a cover song is easier than for most other kind of video types because we already know we gotta put the artist and the title and cover. And then we can arrange that the way we want for tags. People really go crazy about the tags, but not too long ago, YouTube has released a statement where they actually pointed out that tags are not really that important. So before you go crazy about the tags, maybe focus a little bit more on the description that in the first few lines of the description, you also put in the keywords, the song title and the artist name and that it's a cover so that YouTube knows what the video is all about. What I would always tell you to put in the tags is the title of the song and then cover. If we stick to Rain On Me by Lady Gaga, it would be Rain On Me Cover. That would be one tag because I feel like that's what most people would search for and put that like really at the beginning of the tags and also always put in the tags your channel name. I feel like that works well. I don't know why, but I feel like it does. And lastly, thumbnail. So what even is a thumbnail? Basically, it's just the little picture that is displayed before you watch the video. Like when you scroll through YouTube and there's these pictures, these stills of every video, that's a thumbnail. And you wanna design that. Actually think about what kind of picture do you want people to see first? What do you think will make people click on your cover? So have a consistent title theme and stick to it. Don't worry so much about the tags, put your name in there and title and cover. Put the main keywords in the description and design a thumbnail. That's it. Alrighty, we're coming to the end of this video. I have two final tips for you. Number one is don't cover too many different artists. Let's say somebody finds a Billie Eilish cover that I did and they love Billie Eilish and then they click on my channel and they don't just see Billie Eilish covers but so many different artists. Will they subscribe? Maybe. If they click on my channel and I had only Billie Eilish covers, I feel like they would be much more inclined to subscribe because they know what to expect. So you might want to consider choosing a couple of your favorite artists that are your main focus because people will then know what your channel is about. Number two, write down your milestones. You will thank yourself later. I started doing this pretty much right from the start and it's so cool to look back and think about how far you've come. It's just a joy to watch and you always then feel like you're achieving something. Put it down on paper or make screenshots or whatever you wanna do. Feels really good to do that. It's a self-confidence booster for sure. All right, guys, that was it. My last question to you is, what was the most helpful tip from this whole video? I would love to know, so please leave a comment down below. And if you haven't already, now is a good time to check the description box because there's a lot of info in there. I really hope you enjoyed my video, and if you did, please hit the like button. It was a lot of effort, but I feel like I just wanna help you guys. Also, leave suggestions for the next videos. What do you wanna hear more about? Let me know. I read literally everything, so actually let me know. <laughs> and yeah, I will see you in my next video. Bye guys, love you.